What's up everybody, I'm Josh from Blackout, and this was our crib for the night. So I'm gonna give you a tour through this house because even though we're a car channel, this place was so cool and had so much character, we had to show it up. A bathroom, and there's a whole bunch of these bathrooms all over the place in this house. It's somebody's stuff, it's not our stuff. We don't know whose stuff that is. This room's locked. This is where they keep the secret stuff. And there's the man, Justin, coming down the fancy steps. Put the bill of the ball. Stairs. Over here is a big dining room where we had very important business meetings last night while we ate some local pizza from Key West, which was delicious. The view out the back window is pretty awesome. There's a whole bunch of boats out there. We don't know where those came from. I don't think there's anybody on them. None of them have moved, and one of them is sinking. I have no idea what this room is. I'm not rich enough to understand why you would have a room like this. This is a breakfast nook. This is a breakfast nook, according to John. I don't have one of those, but the person that has this house does. You've got two old school kitchens, at least old school in design. They've got updated appliances and all that stuff, stainless steel, everything. A massive living room here. Hi guys. Justin is meeting with Jimmy about important things. Yeah, very important. Where's Luke? He's getting together. Luke's here somewhere. We'll find him. Check these pictures out though. So it was built in like 1930. Some guy married somebody from New York. He owned most of Key West, I guess, and he wanted her to move to Key West and she told him that he had to build her a castle on an island, so that's where this house came from. I was doing some research about him. He owned like a shrimp company and turtle canning company. Apparently you could eat turtles before like 1971. You could get them in a can like tuna, I guess. And this is, I guess, just another living room, game room thing. Played some pool last night. That was fun. There's like a gated little courtyard thing here and they've got a swimming pool. And then they also have another swimming pool and i'm not sure why you need two of those but they do and there's also an ocean right there so there's lots of water should you decide to immerse yourself in it a hot tub over there and there's another hot tub i think too right john and then the view of the back of the house is pretty awesome too it's huge i think this house has eight bedrooms six and a half bathrooms it is absolutely huge even though justin doesn't think it's big enough he thinks it's kind of small sort of weird this house must be huge. So this is cool, the double stacked porch. We got swimming. You want to? Yeah. You know a lot more about this place, don't you? I, kn I know some things, we adventured around. We're on an island, it's pretty cool. Here, I'll take you upstairs and tell you a little bit of the history of the house. Beautiful place. This is actually a table from the Titanic. They got it. I don't even know how, but it was in the water, you can tell, for probably a couple hundred years. And uh, it's known to believe that Prince Albert ate at this table. I think that was his side because there's an A carved into it. This is a pool table actually from the movie Roadhouse. Patrick Swayze went 9-0, and so hopefully the Steelers can do that next week, on this table at the bar of the Roadhouse, if you ever saw the movie. Really cool about him and who doesn't like Patrick Swayze, right? If you know the story of Victoria's Secret, she started making furniture, and this would be her line before she got into undergarments, if you would call them that. So when we decided to build the house, I didn't know if Josh told you a lot of history about it, but it was my grandfather, who was a carpenter his whole life, Josh's dad, John, and all of us would come here every summer and just build a little bit as we go, and finally, 38 years later, look what we have. We're going to the first bedroom. This is where our parents would all sleep. It's a pretty large room. Got your own bathroom in here. I believe this was the first bathroom to be built when we built the house, so everybody shared this bathroom. It was kind of stuffy, and like as kids and working through all that, it was awkward. We have another bedroom back there. That's actually where Josh was born. It was December, so it was cold. And he was born back there. Super fun story about that. We can talk about that later. Now, of course, because my parents and like me had a lot to do with the building of the house, I got the cooler room. <clears throat> this is our bathroom. And then these are our two <laughs> beds in here. And this here is Luke. He's a little tired. He's calling this a vacation, I guess. But this is Luke and he's just gonna sleep and rest. And in due time, my little friend will get up and we'll go from there. How are you? <laughs> so let's go down the stairs and check out the cars and see where everyone's at. And I know we're getting ready to pull out of here, so let's see what's going on with that. And please, 
always remember, if you like this, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel for a lot more cool things. I don't want to tell everybody, but we're building another house. And cool thing about that, it's on the water. And you're right, it's going to be a boat house. Come on, let's see what's going on out here. Crap, it's Josh. Hey, man. He was so, looking for you. Stay tuned, guys. What are you doing? Nothing. He was looking for you, and I said, hey, you're out here. Did you do a tour? Your tour? Of, of what? No, I, I'm looking for my towel. <laughs> Whatever he told you is probably not true. <laughs> Jimmy's always good for a laugh. So, obviously, the cars are the final stop for us on our tour of the house. And we've got the Cayman GT4, the C8 Corvette, the 2004 GTO with a thousand horsepower and twin turbos. And of course, Luke is driving the customer loaner vehicle, Renegade, and doing an awesome job keeping up. So that's why we're here. It's all about the cars. Oh, that's okay. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, check this out. Actually, I want to tell you another real quick thing about this. We have these bikes here, and I don't know if you know much about the Kentucky Derby or like horse racing and things like that, but like on the island, there's obviously wild horses everywhere. There's, okay, he ran back in the brush. But these bikes were used to actually roll up on the side of the horse during the race, use this to hook onto him, and we'd be able to feed the horse. That way he could non-stop race the whole time and there wasn't any like stopping and drinking or anything like that. Fun fact, there's Josh. All right guys, it is day three. We are in Key West and we are about to head back to Miami and start heading north again. This time around, we're gonna try to stay as close to the coast as possible. So we're gonna stay off at of 95 and take route one. The GT4 has been absolutely wonderful to ride in. I did not expect it to be as comfortable as it is. The only complaint I have, there's two of them now at this point. Number one is, not for me, but my wife, the fire extinguisher is kind of annoying. Uh, it's where your feet are. Like, if you wanna move your feet backwards at all, you have a hard time doing that. And also the way these, sheets, these seats are shaped, they sort of push your shoulders forward here. And so like, your shoulders are always kind of curved around, which is not a big deal when you're just driving the car around, but when you're putting thousands and thousands of miles on it for, at this point, we've been driving like 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 14, something like that. So yeah, um, other than that though, like I said, it is perfect. Of course, as expected, all of the fluid levels and all that kind of stuff are perfectly fine. There's digital gauges that tell you all that stuff all the time. Um, also the fuel mileage is pretty impressive, I guess. I know it's a smaller motor, like it's not a big LS like the uh, Corvette and the GTO have, but I'm getting like 23 to 24 miles per gallon, which actually is the same as what Justin is getting in the C8. So very comparable that way. We have spent some time on, of course, some closed courses comparing the two cars. And uh, the C8 gets the GT4 off the line for sure and off of a lower speed roll, but out of like, third gear I think for him or fourth or something like that or no this is an A speed so when he's in a higher gear the GT4 seems to excel a little bit better at higher speeds on the highway than the C8 but overall this thing is an absolute monster and then of course we've got the GTO that's just ridiculous Jimmy's feeding her some oil hasn't used much though not much for as long as we've driven this thing so there really hasn't given uh, there hasn't been a car that has given us a run for our money on that yet we're gonna go get some barbecue hopefully some good down south barbecue here and that's it the hurricane pretty much totally missed us everybody was super nervous that um, when we were leaving that we were gonna get hit by this hurricane Eta or Eta or whatever and uh, it ended up turning into just the tropical storm and then by the time we got down here we experienced some of it in West Palm Beach but not much and then it, it's been gone we've had really awesome weather the entire trip so first time in the Keys and it is gorgeous here so we we have to take a souvenir back with us Justin's got a coconut in the front one thing about the GTO is when you've got two turbos you get a whole bunch of soot so Jimmy took it upon himself to let the whole world know that he's fast. Now, if you're watching this, we don't recommend that you put your finger on your paint and write letters in it, because you might micro scratch the crap out of it, and then you're gonna have to bring it into blackout for us to polish it. So don't do that. This thing hasn't been polished and coated yet. All right, it is now Tuesday. Um, and we just left our mansion castle in the Key West. And that place was incredible. Uh, apparently it was used as a filming location. 
For the uh, MTV show Real World, which is pretty crazy. Um, it was an awesome place. And once again, Josh, thank you so much. That was an incredible experience and I, I will never forget. So thank you so much. <laughs> I had him convinced it wasn't you in there. In my mind, what I want it to look like. I want it to be something that size. Just the cast and tips. Yeah, cast and tips, about that size. I thought you got I really thought you guys were going into Louie. We were waiting up there. I am not going guys by. Cigars? Dude, I didn't even know. Dude, so like it was like two minutes later and I was like, well where's Louie? Like, yeah, mean? I was like, why is the traffic on this side of the divider and I'm on this side, I'm just cruising along. And then I saw the sign it said expressway only. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I want to exit off the expressway, but once you're on you can't get off. So um, so, is there a toll involved in the expressway? Hundred bucks. A really? hundred dollars? Yeah. Because it said if you don't have a sun pass, which we obviously we don't. It's like a toll by plate thing. There was a big sign that said a hundred dollar fine. I, I saw that and I was like, okay, get me out of here yeah. right now. But it was too late. You got PPF on here. You could have thought about it. You could have just went over. Um, they get you once you get on. So if I would have uh, seen you barreling through the barriers. I think I would have peed my pants. I would have laughed. Beach, Florida. So we hung out in South Florida a little bit today, went to do some fun stuff, and now we're heading north. So we don't know where we're gonna end up tonight, but we're having fun. We're gonna take A1A the whole way up the coast. We're gonna hopefully see some cool stuff. Everybody says it's a very scenic drive. You trying to race, bro? Except we're 1,500 miles away, not 60. It is the goat, though, and I have 